Recording is on. Yeah, so we are on. And today's topic is uh, the one that Gary was mentioning some time ago about ownership, because we hear a lot about ownership in web free space. And I'm also curious how we would see it from the perspective of 5D, for instance. So uh, I think it's a very, very um, complex topic, in fact. And I loved uh, what Sarah said just a few minutes ago about it. And Sarah, can you try to repeat or go again with some flow? How do you feel about this topic? of ownership i think that yeah sure i'll try to go again uh or i will go again and say it is that you know we're a lot of us are in this space because we are looking for autonomy and like in a relationships we don't want to be owned and i think that like freedom is, is what we all want so then like what is ownership and if if you're owning something, then are are you then owned? Like, uh, yeah, I know that's not as eloquent as earlier, but that's, that's the gist is we want autonomy. And, and if we, I mean, can we really own anything? Like, and what does the ownership even equate to? Hmm. Everything seems kind of temporary for this lifetime. So are we really owning anything here or just uh, borrowing? <laughs> what do you think, guys? Well, if you're this? borrowing, who are you borrowing from? If you're borrowing, who are you borrowing from? From the universe? <laughs> yeah, no, this ownership is itself, uh, what do you say? It's, it's quite a deep aspect, the way you look at it. And if you look at it from the perspective of 5D and the consciousness and, and what, what Sarah and you just mentioned, like, you know, we we came with nothing and we'll go with nothing. Then what, what is the ownership all about in the entire life? No matter what we own uh, and what whatever physical we own, definitely it will be staying here. But the experiences that we own, that will definitely go with us. That's that's one point to look at it. And uh, again, you know, it's, it's very discreet to say, you know, like you guys can uh, fill in the points and then we can talk about it. From the other side, we have, like, we are everything. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then we own it. It's yeah. part of us. So we exactly. kind of own it. Exactly. It's part like, of us. Like there, there are two sides of the same scale, two sides of the same scale. One is like, okay, no matter how much we own, whatever we do, we go empty handed. On the other side, like whatever we built, whatever we create, whatever we manifest, we own it in one form or other. So, so the thing is like, you should own anything, but nothing should own you getting the difference. You can own anything, whatever you want, but nothing can own you. You can own a car, but the car sh should not own you. Getting the point. So that's what uh, that's what it comes if you have to uh, like say it in one line. It sounds Can like you you're saying to Shar that it's a mindset. Well, I I yeah, was in that when you own things, those things own your time and take attention and take care and take financial responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and so I think like, well, I, I, I think it's a misconception if it's even possible. I mean, the more you have, the more weighed down you are. Uh, you know, basic necessities are important, but once you start moving past that, uh, those things do start to own you or your time or, or your resources, uh, which, or, or take them. Maybe you don't see that as ownership, but if they have control of the time or resources, then in, in a way that's ownership. I think there's a real fluidity to it too. It's like, it's like you said, over time, if you own a car, 
you may own it for a period of time and then it's switching hands to someone else. And the same thing with your home or your clothing or whatever it is that you may pass along to someone. And I think, you know, there's, there is a real shift happening in terms of that circular economy in general. And, and in a bigger sense, you know, how, what we touch and what we think we own can be used in a different way. And, uh, I mean, it's been a real journey for me. I live in a studio apartment with my husband who's right behind the screen. <laughs> so, but I have had a big house and I've had, you know, uh, cars and, you know, gardens and all these things. But uh, I think as I get older and also just have the time to think about what I really need, um, there's been a very big shift in, in my life. And I, and I see that happening with a lot of people who are assessing and reassessing. Like everything is interconnected. Also, the more we kind of have, as Sarah mentioned, now it resonates with me too. This stuff also kind of owns us, our attention, so energy. And then this all minimalistic um, movements, yes, that the less you actually own around you, like your mind is more free, in fact. Yes, uh, absolutely. And then you find yourself maybe more. Go ahead, Jackie. Happy to see you. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I feel like this goes along with the ethos of, of Web3 and blockchain and this whole decentralization. You know, if you want to be decentralized in a lot of aspects of your life, you you have to pack light. You can't be traveling with all this stuff around you. And now, um, you know, with travel and everything becoming so much more accessible. I think people are really, you know, this idea of centralizing in, you know, your McMansion and having all your things in one place, it's just sort of like dissipating a little bit. So I think what I'm hopeful for is that like, we're, we're naturally seeing ownership as what you said, Aga, like we, you know, we are in and of this world. So you know, we're like owner occupiers, <laughs> like we own everything, we occupy everything, we're here, we can't be separated from, anything and uh something that's been like playing in my mind a lot just dealing with a lot of different cultures and values and things is it is interesting when you try to put things in words of ownership like when you really sit down to write the contracts like that's where all the friction starts to happen and 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 stuff so as easy as web3 sounds like oh you're gonna have a smart contract it's, it's like you still have to program it and figure out you know splits and all that kind of stuff so at the end of the day, is it the act of putting things in words that like create this ownership mentality? Because prior to that, you can only have like verbal agreements, right? And yeah, so it's just kind of an interesting thing that's been playing in my head. And actually, that's why I thought about separate meeting about contracts, because it's so really <laughs> connected to, to this, this ownership too, but also on, on different aspects. So I hope to, to develop it later and like on separate session, but I, because I think there's like a lot to add. I'm happy that you brought it up, Jackie. And it reminds me also like we may not use so much. We may just occupy one space and move to some another, like with less st stuff probably. And then it reminds me of that quote, like, you will owe nothing and you will be happy. <laughs> that, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, is it this way how we want to see it? There is something. Are, you, I um, are any of you familiar with like the rent the runway concept? Like there was like. So it was like women were like buying evening gowns and stuff. It's very expensive. So then there was a site that you could rent these and you just rent the dress for a fraction of the price. And I think maybe that's what I'm seeing too with, with blockchain is that we're able to answer supply and demand in such new ways that like sharing things globally is just gonna be a lot easier than having owning and upkeep and some of the stuff Sarah and Maya were, were touching on. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, I love this concept actually, but then who actually owns it. I think this is the, the point that if it's like shared uh, and the owner is kind of like some decentralized organization that it resonates with me, it's fine, it's cool actually. But if it stays the way it is, that it's in hands of a couple of people out there and they decide on it, then I don't feel comfortable really. 
it's funny because what you just said, Aga, it's like most, a lot of people are like, you know, I don't like ownership unless I'm the one that owns it. And I'm the one that's renting it out. As long as I'm the one that's on top of the pyramid, then it's okay. But if I'm not, then I'm not for it. And that's, I think that's kind of the way that humanity has gone. It's like, no, I don't like that. But if I'm the one that owns it, I'll rent it out to you. The perspective it changes and then you you change too. I mean, many people change and that's actually the way you check. I, I heard it from one of the guys who is um, quite rich and, and is surrounded by rich people. And they were actually saying that you actually see what what the person is when they gain more. And what they're doing about it. And it's not reverse when you are poor, <laughs> but it's when you are rich, how you are going to um, manage it, I suppose. Are you using for power or for sharing or something else? Yes, exactly. Like when you have more than what's required, and then actually the a real person came in but but i read it somewhere like uh, you know and i found it quite interesting also they said that uh, owning anything or money it doesn't uh, uh money is not bad it just enhances enhances the person's innate nature like if a kinder person will get the money he'll definitely do some kind act some acts of philanthropy whereas uh, on the other hand person who's totally into himself when he becomes rich then he will also show his true colors Maya, I wanted to, to say something too. <laughs> uh, well, I was just thinking about, you know, it's it's that whole idea kind of Jackie touched on with we have the sharing economy, right? But it still exists because there are owners of apartments renting out to Airbnb guests or whatever, you know, the dynamic is there. The owner is still responsible for the upkeep and the taxes and all those things. Um, but it's given us sort of a taste of like, what if we all shared? And it's only when you get into the legal things, the contract, the thing that you have to sign when you're a guest at, at an Airbnb or, or in whatever aspect that you're talking about. But it's like, once the lawyers get involved in you, know, once there's a contract there, then you have to start thinking about, well, yeah, I wanna be protected if they damage it. Yeah, I wanna be protected if there's you know this happening to me or my building or my car or whatever. And that is what shifts the mindset is sort of having to focus on what do you wanna be held responsible for and what are you willing to not be responsible for and how, how we play with that idea. Maya, that is so perfectly said because it, it's just so much of the space is like, you know, I was I was telling a few people at this event last night, you know, it's, it's funny how many people want to like hire me to like mint their NFTs. And I'm like, but they're yours. Like, I'll show you how to set up a wallet and how to connect and how to do it yourself. But like, I'm not going to handle your digital assets. That's crazy. Right. And, but they, you know, but they don't really, I think there's like just a disconnect that this is like, you know, not your keys, not your coin, all that stuff we say in this space. And it really, it's so easy to talk about like all of this going on, but like the root of the matter is just always there. I mean, at least for me, it always is. And it's, it, it always comes down to that is like, who is going to, especially in the financial sector. I mean, I, I do a lot of stuff with um, financial professionals and I mean, that's for financial planners that that is their job is, is accepting your money and managing it for you. So what does this look like in the, in the crypto space and asset space? Yeah. And do people who really say they want ownership want ownership? Because there are a lot of things to worry. You are responsible now. You're accountable now. So yeah, it's it, it's. I think it really challenges people to like be what you say. Like you really say you want this, and then you go do it and say it's too hard, and you tap out. Then did you really want it? You know. So Jackie, I, I was at a, a McKenzie uh, thing on blockchain last night here in New York. And they they laid down the following uh, the, the following statistics. So they did they did two uh, polls, one in March of 2021 and one in July. And in March, it was like people that wanted to get into crypto but haven't. Uh, it was like 13 percent, um, and then it was up to sorry, it was 30 percent. Within the next 12 to to 18 months, it's like they want to get into crypto. 
uh, it went up in July to 33%. Um, people who had actually done it, there was only, they were in like the, 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 the 10 to 12 digit area, like people who actually had crypto. But then when they, when they were asked, what is the number one thing that would make you purchase the cryptocurrency? And their answer was, uh, if my bank offered it. So it has no, like, we're the outliers, we're the mavens, we're at the beginning of the chasm, right? That's us, that's everyone in this room. This is, you know, we think who crypto's for. Everyone else that we're waiting for to get that mass adoption, they're waiting for the bank to offer it to them. They're waiting for you to do custody for them. They want it fast, they want it simple, they want it now. It's not for them. It's Which convenient. comes to the topic of, yeah, of responsibility for yourself. And um, yeah, I also believe if it doesn't, like the mindset doesn't change, there won't be too many changes in the web free otherwise. Like uh, it will go the same direction as it was. It's, it's so much easier, more convenient to uh, forward so, responsibility to someone else. So and protect the, yourself, feel the security in this way, yeah? How do you, how do you define Web three? What does that what does that mean to you? Yeah, I I I see it as a place where um, as a shift in mindset to go more towards uh, yeah ownership also um, among among people like more power to people, more focus on people in this space and reflected in different technologies like blockchain. Uh, also, there is metaverse or AI coming with it. And yeah, that like the centralization is, is quite uh, relating to it. Yeah. However, I don't see it as an end point. And I think that we will look for some balance in between in the end. <clears throat> Not sure how it exactly looked like, but I suppose that will be some some sort of Web4 uh, middle ground. <laughs> Everything is to balance in the end. We, we, we are now shifting from one polarity to another. I don't feel like going between two extremes, it's, it's the right way. It's, it's probably about finding some middle ground. I don't see everything decentralized, for instance, and now many, many different business models are, are going to, to this, like, let's decentralize, decentralize everything. I'm not sure if we are ready, if we can cope with, with decentralizing everything. I heard that maybe with help of AI, but I'm also not sure about this, this direction. It's a complex <laughs> topic, another one. And you guys? Like I like definitely like talk about decentralization and I since the web three came in and all this came in, I did, did quite a of a research and this might sound awkward to many, but that's what I find out. Decentralization has been too much marketed to us just to give that web three hype. When you dig down into it, it's it's not that it, it is like that. Even I was looking for Ethereum wallets. You look at any wallet of the major currencies, it's all owned by a few people, few select people, only or like four percent of the people are get, getting all the Ethereum wallets. I shared this post on LinkedIn yesterday, moving from proof of work to proof of stake. Again, has questioned the decentralization of Ethereum, the biggest block blockchain uh, like share uh, having the DApps in place. And the same goes with Solana coming in. Like all the Solana goes down. Now in a blockchain, if all the Solana goes down, that means it's not centralized. How can every node get down? So again, this has been too much marketed towards this decentralization. Like AWS, most of the most of all of these platforms have been uh, hosted on AWS. So so that I, that really you know doesn't feel me good inside the way they have marketed to us and they the way how we all you know came up like with this all this decentralization thing coming in. But when you dig deep into it and you find this is the reality. So that 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 doesn't you know I, I don't feel good about the way they have made it. 
but it's so perfect for media no like going from one extreme to another it's like people want this because want then that. they get emotions Emotion. yeah? yeah and they yeah. Are, you need to be right or left you know yeah. you know, have like democrats republicans it has to go like two different <laughs> ways or uh black or white like there is no middle ground hey that is like a lot to it, everything is too complex to actually put it just in one or another um, yeah. that's something Gary knows so I, I see that Gary joins that <laughs> hey. about media <laughs> our recent discussion too about black and white and <laughs> yeah so uh, I think there's like a few things that's actually going on right I'm not sure if like my reception is good enough and you can all hear me because like uh, I kind of like used up my quota already we hear uh, you. so one part about like the whole web tree thingy, if you kind of like just totally ignore all the hype and look at what is already there. Before, when we are trying to log into any service, we kind of like we default to some form of email addresses. And the email addresses, unfortunately, is controlled by one of those like big providers. So technically, every single thing that you can like use is kind of like passing through them. So what is already there is that, hey, there's like a, this trend where you're now allowed to lock in with this public key of which the private key only you own. So technically, in that like regard, your identity online is no longer controlled by any other email service provider it's just your private key you control it that's like about the gist of like what web3 is right now <laughs> anything on top of that my perspective is like mainly a lot of marketing and hype and actually like not a lot of stuff there and then like talking about the whole like uh, ethereum like uh, merge if you're looking at it from the perspective of economic inclusiveness before if you want to mine the ethereum chain you buy a machine, a high specification machine probably costs you around like 14,000 US dollar and you can start mining. Now with the merge, you have to prove that you have staked 32 Ethereums to the chain before you're allowed to mine. And that in US dollars is around like $40,000. <laughs> so I do not see how that actually promotes uh, more people coming in to be able to kind of like be part of this, right? In fact, it has became more exclusive than inclusive, just looking at the numbers itself. Gary, I'm just smiling because I've been like watching, you know, the whole internet blow up about how Ethereum is sustainable now and energy is not. <laughs> now you're going to hit them with inclusion? Oh my gosh, they're going to, what are they going to have to do now? <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. man. I'm like such a downer, but I'm always like a downer most of the time. I mean, like even when I was like speaking at Davos, everyone was like hyping, hyping, hyping about like the whole Web3 thing. Yeah, just like saying, hey, uh, folks, you know, with all this hype and you look at the actual adoption, it's just 0.5% of the whole population. And then uh, you look at like the whole like user experience, like so far, it's just shit. <laughs> it's not very, everyone like feeling really awkward at the panel. <laughs> so, so let's, if I, I can, love approaching hey, it with laughter. <laughs> Let's look at a good, let's look at something good about it, please. So yeah. for me, what Web3 did for me is it made me aware of a set of incentives that I wasn't aware of before. So it was sort of like a game design that I was a part of and I was in agreement to whether I knew it or not, but I had no clue. And I think what has come through both the crypto, you know, era and now then the NFTs era, now the DAO era, whatever we want to call it. Everybody is waking up to a set of incentives that they now are like, wait a second, I didn't see those, but now I do. And I don't agree with that. So I'm going to go over here and circulate my energy in a way that creates more peace, love, harmony, unity, a more more unity than this was separateness. This is great too, because this gave us a set of experiences that I'm infinitely thankful for. 
And now we have this awareness. We had to look at the problems for a moment so we could come over here and start creating what the solutions are. Mm. And so that's what I think Web3 is. It's an evolution in consciousness. More, It's not really, I don't care about the name Web3, but everybody is waking up to yeah. a new way of being that didn't wasn't possible for themselves, whatever, 20 years ago. Or Actually, Neil, I want to add to your point of view. Uh, what I observe is that like... Uh, well, Web3 is forming as a trend. There's actually another like very strong trend that's been happening, right? The trend of like a massive adoption of like this whole mindfulness notion that like spread across the West over the past few years. So somehow they kind of like, got intermingled, which is a good thing. And uh, what I'm saying is that, yes, some aspects of like what we are doing now is probably like riding on the mindfulness trend that kind of like somehow for unknown reasons got conflated with like the whole web tree technology notion i think that's so, really oh sorry i think i just want to say that's really well put gary and it's funny because i think all of us in the room like we feel that tension between the people that like are about mindfulness and then the people that like aren't it's um it, it's very like dualistic at, at times yeah mm-hmm so, yeah, it's like, so when you kind of like jump in like the, the whole Web3 ecosystem, you kind of like go into some groups and kind of like feel like the, the, the uh, vibe is off, right? And that's mainly because whether you are on the mindfulness bandwagon and you, or you're not. If you're kind of like not in the mindfulness bandwagon, then like uh, basically like the, the scope of Web3 Web3 kind of like becomes kind of bigger and broader but if you're kind of like on the mindfulness like bandwagon then like the scope becomes more focused for your personal uh, from your personal perspective right like for example if you can kind of like jump over to like say uh peter pang right he's like purely like uh self-identify as a dj right and like you go into kind of like some of the groups that he's kind of like part of the whole vibe is like totally different <laughs> so yeah so like after like all, seeing all this i kind of like see that yes mindfulness got conflated into like the whole web tree like uh, marketing thingy but i believe mindfulness in itself can stand alone as a theme everything is interconnected with with each other i would say that that's what true. is happening and and there are many different trends and they're coming mm -hmm. from our collective consciousness like raising in different aspects and in the end we will connect this the Thoughts together, and then, um, yes, I think it's just reflected in so many different ways. Um, and like, I'm, I'm just a little confused. So, so you're saying Web3 created a mindfulness bandwagon, but no, then also, I'm, there's no, that's not present in the DGen community, or no, I'm like saying the mindfulness bandwagon already existed, somehow it got like, uh, it's kind of like it got mixed up at some point with like Web3. So it's like, yes, everything's related. Maybe because like a subset of people that's working on like Web3 are also in like uh, in practicing mindfulness. Yeah. Well, it and, will connect. when you have a, like a crypto wallet, for example, mm -hmm. yep. you, you get, you have a place to store your energy, mm -hmm. right? And yep, then yep. you can circulate it to Jackie, what you agree with mm -hmm. or what you don't agree with. Right. That's and we're doing that every day in our lives anyway. We have energy that comes through us and we circulate it to what we agree with mm -hmm. as we're on this call or we circulate it to something else that we're in dance with. And so I think crypto or Web3 or NFTs help people be aware of that, that sort of self-responsibility that we have. It's like, it's like we built the way that it already is working so that we could see that this is the way that it's working so we can make new decisions and actions in our lives. I think that's what's going on here. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like a tool that facilitates what you want to do. Right? I like that. A tool that facilitates what you want to do. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, the, uh, some, the sword, right? It's like a knife, Japanese knife, very sharp. Wow, like top of the uh, top of the class kind of like tool, right? You can use it to cut sushi to make everybody feel good and happy about like their life after they eat the sushi, or you can like use it to like kill the next person, like what the ja Japanese like samurais do. So, Web3 is a very, very neutral tool in that regard. Yes, 
hundred percent. And it has lots of great things and, and yes. like bad things, but beyond that, it mm -hmm. just is what it is. And how, what do we want to do with it now? <laughs> yeah. Actually, like I want everything. to add more. Yeah. yeah I Polarity. want to add more to like what you just said. It's like the, the good and bad actually doesn't exist on the tool. The good and bad actually exist in our mind, right? It's our inner mind, our imagination that allows us to like figure out, okay, we can use this knife to make sushi. We can imagine that, okay, we can use this knife to kill the next person beside me. It's all in the mind. Yes, exactly. The, the tool that, that doesn't uh, uh, make, uh, like, you know, that's not good and bad. It's just the tool. And that's the conversation I was having. Like in India, there's a, a huge, uh, you know, two ways going on. One, one guy says mm -hmm. ban the cryptos and the blockchain itself. And the other will say, like uh, you know to keep it alive so i just said like because they have they have this argument that all the bad actors are using it for money laundering and any such that shit so you know i, I raised the point over there like before crypto came in they were definitely using fiat currency they were using golds they were using diamonds have you guys ever said to ban those things definitely there will be bad actors but have you ever said to ban those things all these bad actors were using that and, and I said, like before mobile phones came in, they were using landlines. Definitely their business was slow. Other guy gave me in the, gave me a counter act that like previously those transactions were slow, but crypto and Web3 makes it fast. So I said before telephones were there, landlines were there, they were operating from telephones. Then the mobile phones came in. You guys are using, and then the smartphones came in. It, make, it made their work, work all easy. Did you guys ever said to block them? But definitely you said block crypto, block Web3, no blockchain in this country. So... You know, that's like, it's just the tool. How, how do you use it? That's on us. So, yeah. Tishar, I, uh, I used to do anti-money laundering for uh, a large financial institution. And you're, you're, you're spot on. Um, what, in fact, just, just last night, I was speaking with a gentleman who uh, has a consulting firm that basically traps down bad actors, right? And, uh, you know, it, it's funny because if you want to get caught, use blockchain because here it is it's open record and everyone can see every single transaction you've ever done and they can build a network out and see every transaction who you've participated with that they've ever done and the justice department is just you know they're drooling right now at the opportunity for building cases right and the blockchain is gonna is gonna put them away um but when a bank is called in uh and it's facing fines and not only does the justice department but the bank also has to go hire out a third-party auditor to go through five years of records and data and subpoena in the proper process and and all that it's like um you know if you want to launder money uh and go to jail you know use the blockchain for everyone else there's commercial banking um because you know you can, literally i can in a commercial bank account if i have it have it open i can ach you a million dollars just like that no one would even blink an eye because that's a normal course of business but if i were to go and deposit ten thousand dollars in the checking account oh wh where's the source of funds where'd you get the money from like you're obviously up to no good ten thousand dollars forget it it's like El Chapo's network was a $23 billion business. They're bigger than most consulting firms. I mean, like you, you, it's just, it's just unreal. Like the, so if you want to launder money, open a commercial bank. Account. Don't, don't come into blockchain. <laughs> very true. Very true. So uh, I'm sorry I missed like the first 20 minutes, but it's like, uh, how does this all tie back to ownership? I'm just like curious. Yeah, I wanted to say that we are going into this uh, different direction, also like into transparency sort of thing. Uh -huh. I think it's uh, it will be also great for for another topic there. But coming back to ownership um, and this kind of collective ownership now that we are promoting in, with. Well, Gary, why don't you tell us what ownership is for you? Because we, I love hearing your version of ownership. <laughs> All right. So here's where it's interesting, right? Uh, 
the modern version of ownership is like this is mine therefore i have every right and control about it but if you kind of look back at like uh say the indigenous like culture the ones that were here like uh they're kind of like, occupied like uh australia new zealand uh southeast asia like uh like even america before like the uh, modern like uh society came about they actually do not see land as something they own it's like okay we're just like here to like uh take care of whatever it is and it's like we actually don't own it because we don't stick around long enough <laughs> so it's like uh yeah the whole like ownership notion is in a sense uh frame in a direction that's uh getting us like down the thinking like in the wrong direction that's how i'm like that's how i'm seeing it right now and can i add to that that like a yeah. house people on average move houses every three to five years mm -hmm. so the idea yeah. and and you pay all the interest you know in the first 15 years and so it's like it just doesn't make any sense like the idea of ownership you don't own it you don't own anything i mean that's the reality of it we don't and, and i get that there's like a spiritual path it's like I don't need anything, whatever. And at the same time, I have a car that I own and I'm thankful that I own that car, you know? So it's like, it's gotta be like a middle road, kind of like what Aga was saying earlier, where we like redefine the definition of what it means to own things. So I'd love to jump in here um, because I think one thing, like when you when you talk about those those uh, like indigenous tribes, right? There was there was obviously like violence at times, like people running into each other and things like that. So is it that we created this idea of land ownership, like out of safety protection, that we have these you know things we can point to, or, or whatever? And now it's almost like I, I picture a world. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to articulate this well, but if everything was like DAOs and we all had like tokens that could be swapped and exchanged and you know, whatever, we were a lot able to, we had the mechanisms to interact with one another. Like, could we travel safely now? Like, is that something we could, like humanity could actually start doing, like travel around and meet each other and not want to kill each other and take over and whatever. I mean, are we there yet? Or, and will DAOs like allow that to happen because the transaction is like, there's something to point to that we can look at but it is automated, you know, it just, it runs based on what we put into it. So um, yeah, that's it. What I heard you say was liquidity matters because then you can trade in and out of things and it doesn't matter if you own it, you just have access to it hmm. and then you have access to the next thing. Actually, we should let the energy flow from one to another place and, and person and so on. So I'm, I'm bringing here maybe this uh, different perspective too. And uh, someone told me, I, mean, I think it was under one of, one of my posts related to this gift economy too, you know, uh, that you cannot share uh, like with this gift economy something that you don't own. What do you think, guys, about this? Mm. <laughs> well, here's where it's interesting. Eh? Uh, like right now, like where I'm camped at is like a property of the commons. No one technically owns it, but everybody owns it, right? And like I'm not even paying rent. I'm like kind of like using a property that everyone owns. So it's like from my perspective, it's kind of like... Uh, Back to like Jackie's question, right? Well, maybe DAOs would actually like start uh, converting like some of the utility that was like prior, priorly like privatized, monetized into like a property, com uh, prop uh, like property of the commons of sorts. So if you like own tokens in that DAO, then you have like access to that utility. Then like back to like what Aga said about like the flowing of energy. Kind of like right now we are like already experimenting with that in true side DAO. Uh, with like the whole uh, launch pad thingy and then like uh, the uh, token swaps with like uh, Wasio. It's like, okay, they'll provide some uh, some utility to us. We'll give them some of our tokens. We'll provide like some utility to them. We'll take some of their tokens. And yeah, at the end of the day, like when you like take a step back and look at the whole DAO ecosystem, you have like DAOs like holding tokens of each other. They start becoming like an interconnected web of sorts. 
isn't it? Yeah, but I'm I'm not sure how <laughs> uh, how it was answering that question. If you can share something that you don't own. Yeah, if you don't own, you can still share it, right? Like property of commons, you don't. Nobody owns it. Like this land I'm camped on, Neil like doesn't own it. I don't own it. I can share it with uh, this other neighbor that like came mm -hmm. like a uh, camp beside. It's like shared by everybody. No one owns. No one owns. LinkedIn, it. you don't own it, but you share it. <laughs> oh, maybe what actually we do share or give. No, mm. what what are uh, like. Like what? What you guys are like? As for my understanding, what Aga is saying is something else, and what you are saying is something else. Like, mm -hmm. you know, definitely, uh, definitely in in life in general, you can't give something you know which you don't possess. You know, have you have you met a person? You know, only a person who is peaceful, who is happy inside. Being with that person, you can peace, happy and blissful. You know. Somebody who's having a great knowledge of tech, definitely you can share it. Somebody yeah. now who, who doesn't know even a single thing about about a particular stream, he doesn't own anything in that. How can he share it? But what <laughs> you are saying is, yeah, like That's I, true. Don't, like, I don't know Chinese. You know, come and ask me Chinese. I can share about it. So, so mm -hmm. that is that is one aspect. So, I and see. what you guys are saying is, as per my understanding, is like. Something that is open, like air, is nobody owns the air. It's open to everybody, and everybody yeah, has it. Comments, no? yeah, so, so those are two different things. So yeah. definitely, uh, we should, like everybody should, be it tech space, be it spiritual space, be it individuality, and be it 5D. We should definitely try to get something. Get something. Become more than we are, and then you can share better then we can share about it to others. That's what I think. We actually share some things together yeah. in the sense, like air. Yeah. <laughs> I will not give you probably air. I cannot <laughs> do this yeah. way. But we are in fact sharing it through yes. this common experience on this earth, let's say. So, so and, there will be two different types of sharing. Like I can share with you my knowledge, my, my skills, my energy. Uh, on the other side, we are sharing together some common. So keep going with that, because uh, like energy, right? Energy starts off in the etheric, and then it turns into my AirPods, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like a if we share our energy like we are, it will turn into the material. I think it is like slowly evolving, isn't it? Yeah, it's like uh, look at the progress that's like made like last uh, like this past Monday. All the thoughts like suddenly like crystallized into like something. It's like oh okay, wow. Before there was nothing, and now there's kind of like something like growing organically, evolving. Yeah, say more about that, Gary. That tell 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 him about the part with the petri pod and how how um like things grow. Oh, you mean like the mycelium like network? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like just all interconnected, right? It's like, uh, I was like, you ever, if you ever like seen like a mushroom grow from nothing into actually like a whole network and then start sprouting mushroom, like the whole process is just fascinating. You know? I like got to like see it like grow or go from end to end a few times because I was like messing around with it. And then, uh, yeah. The... Sure. <laughs> what? I got. No, sorry. I thought you broke it and then you continue. So. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm done. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. No, I was just wanted to say that I really loved that movie. Um, I think it was on Netflix about this uh, whole beautiful life of fungi and and how they grow. It, it's uh, oh, it's no. just amazing. And actually, the the fact that you can probably make some bio computer out of it, it's it's just uh, mind blowing. Uh, can't wait to to see this kind of stuff happening. Uh, would be great. Is that a documentary or? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, the, the, the experts in this area, they're, they're explaining how mushrooms are important, actually super important to our ecosystem in general and how many different patterns are, are from there. As above, so below. As below, so above. I think we, yeah, we can definitely find a lot of inspiration in the nature. And, and I love that uh, that aspect too. Yeah.
And, and then, then... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's fascinating, huh? And then like uh when you like study like and observe the mycelium network, uh like humans like right now in civilization, we are like so used to hierarchy. However, when you like look at the whole mycelium network, like the whole network can like literally sustain the entire forest. And when you study it, there's like zero hierarchy at all. So what I'm like curious about is it uh is that is it possible for us to kind of like somewhat replicate like uh the organization the way like uh, the mycelium network organized itself like and replicate it over to like the way humans organize themselves and not Let's like do have... that that like Let... to me is like yeah yeah you're you're 100 percent agree like it's the hierarchy <clears throat> that is the patriarchy the bureaucracy that screws everything up over the long run so that's what's got to go and we got to go we got to move in a new direction here yeah and like i've been like just really trying to figure out how that would translate right and then when i was like looking through all the historical doctrines that's out there i would say like the one that really closest match was like the uh, tao te ching which is like the you know the lao tzu's like teaching this was like okay well it's like and then like uh, that's what kind of like, got me like curious about the whole dao thing is like dao dao is like a pun right <laughs> a pun on that thing it's like all right, since like uh, this is this Tao thing, let's like figure out how we can like translate, uh, extract all the principles and apply it to like a Tao and see if it actually would work. I think this Just organizational like, topic, it's like a separate one, guys. Um, yeah. Because I think so many too. Thoughts. And because we like, humans are like don't know that mm, how important we are as particles in this whole organization. And I think we are not ready with our mindset yet. We are still um, learning ourselves and what what is our uh, place in this whole system. Mm -hmm. Instead, we okay. try to, you know, move us somewhere else where it's not actually our nature. Like we are rediscovering right now our nature, I suppose. And, and then it's... 100%. Very true. Yeah, that's like, but coming back to ownership, guys, we were talking about, you know, um, some sort of collective ownership. And then through this also Mama. like living, sharing. Um, and then someone also under my post mentioned like, they don't like this movement towards <laughs> communism. communism. So 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 let's yeah. take a look at that actually the a... communism by origin it wouldn't be as it is right now presented because the version of the communism right now existing it's through sort of dictatorship again of sort of party that has everything correct it's a fascism no? the the current like uh, communist like uh, countries when you like really examine their structure they are not communist it is fascist that's what I was going to say. First, you got to define what's really exactly. going on. Exactly. Yeah, but when when people hear about this, you know, common ownership, then it's like first thing, communism. But communism, I think for a reason, was programmed this way in our perception as something bad, uh, like related to Putin. You just well, put this Putin crazy guy. <laughs> it's po purely political. Yeah. It's just been political. So maybe we let's like redefine it or find another word for it. It just depends on the lens you use to look at everything. Like the way that Trace looks at something and I look at something is different, right? Because Trace is the wonderful, beautiful person that he has with all the experiences he has. And I'm the person that I am with all the experiences that I have. And so when we look at something, we see two, we see different things, you know? And that's cool because if I see certain things and then Trace sees certain things and together we have like, better goggles, sort of, so to speak, better VR goggles. And then Gary comes and Tushar comes and Aga comes and we got this like big picture that we can, but we have to get out of our own ways with these names of like anything political. We got to leave all this language that we've learned, throw it out the window. <laughs> and, and I would even throw like, you know, like, like the, our egos, right? And like the, our, totally. our, our insistence to be correct, our insistence to be, um, <laughs> right all the time and and, and yeah. that sort of thing and i think that's what basically takes a really good idea and and puts the toxins in it right and um 
Absolutely. And, you, know, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, we're all lonely. We all just want to be understood. We want to be loved. And then, you know, when you look at the concept of what love really is, it's not, you know, when I'm, when I'm coming at you and I'm trying to give constructive criticism, it's not that I'm doing it to attack you. It's that I'm coming from a good place and I'm trying to improve you. I'm trying to make you a better person and vice versa. Yet when we receive that feedback and we receive that criticism, it feels like an attack and it makes us toxic and it puts up those guards and those defenses. And that's what creates the polarization. It's like, no, I have to be right. I have to be right on this issue. This well, there's problem. still ego in saying I'm going to make you better. Like, absolutely. I know something that you don't, I'm going to make you right. better. So there's... Somehow yeah. we've got to get to a place. First of all, I'm thankful for my ego because I wouldn't be here in this body without it. It's like a starting place for the ego thing, right? Second of all, we're all in this together, period, period, period. There is a difference between healthy ego and like ego promoted and like that it's driving us towards some, you know, for me, for myself, etc. Like I want to be in power and there is a healthy ego understanding that I'm part of everything and I also need to take care of myself mm -hmm. as everything is kind of equally important. So this is sort of healthy approach. And then we have this one, like, I want more power and I want to rule. I want to be, yeah, I'm better. I need to compare myself. I, I, I'm sometimes really, uh, and I see it in, in like uh, all these mindful books. Uh, there's also a lot of programming towards this. Like think about 20% of people that are the best and now try to be as good as them and then try to be better than them. And it's like <laughs> constant, co you know, comparing yourself to others. Like, well, well then yeah. let's, so that, let's use healthy ego and be better than yourself. The other yesterday. side of that, yeah. the other side of that is the less than. We've been programmed with a less than complex that makes us want to overcompensate on the other side so we can just be enough. Like you're not enough. Yeah, but you need to be from within, correct? So then you compare yourself saying, from yourself from yesterday and not to others. And this is The collective like programming is you won't be enough unless you achieve something big, for example. And then we come back to this place like everybody understands their place in this organization in this huge organism let's say and each particle is important and each plays a different role in it and you don't need to compare yourself with this other person because you are here for a different reason and the roles don't fit inside the language we've been given we've been given business and marketing and investments yeah, and also. all that stuff all that language we got to transcend that language we're gonna need to create a new language Hmm. How would that language look like? I'm curious. I think before language, there will be a period of definitions, redefining <laughs> stuff, or even, sorry, giving different names for stuff, which I love. Oh, wait, New wait, dictionary. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. New definitions for things. Hmm. For ourselves. How do we hmm. define ourselves? How do we... How do we show up? You know, like like one thing, like when it comes to the ownership, what I believe, like first first ownership that uh, let Aga come, okay? Yeah. What? Yeah. So, so I was saying, like with the let let her join. Hold on a second. Yeah. So what I was saying is, with the ownership thing come in. Like, I believe the first ownership should be of ourselves. Like, if we own ourselves in better way, then we can have the sense of what ownership is all about and what to own and what not to own. And second thing with this, like the ego thing, like, again, ego has been defined in two parts. Like, one is the way, uh, the definition that is came from the West and the, like, what, what we hear from the very beginning is the ego is nothing but the self-identity that's the indian version of it it's nothing but the self-identity which helps us to sustain the body then comes the the western definition of the ego that that wants everything that sees everything that wants everything and won't want to acquire more no matter where you are placed you you have to acquire more 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 ego will say you to that and like you said neil the comparison 
now human mind human mind is definitely built this way that it only learns by comparison by comparing something like if you're fly like even if you're moving faster on the road if there are no trees or or nothing on the, on the roads by side you can't even identify your speed for example you're you're on a aeroplane and it's it's flying at 200 miles per hour you you won't even know if it is fast or slow until some other plane at 300 miles per hour come in and crosses you up then you can only only identify that you were slow okay so that's the, that's the first thing is the ownership of our thoughts first thing is the ownership of where we belong first thing is the ownership of knowing what who we are actually and how our mind works how we work and then then my friend if you're able to crack this code then no matter what you do coding you do web3 you do marketing you know what not you will definitely gonna bang it you definitely gonna contribute to the side you you definitely gonna make that difference in a positive way Thank you. I love that. And ownership of our infinite selves. Because I think in this plane there has been an attempt to not to victimize us just to like get real with it. There's been an attempt to own us from the second we were born into this planet. And so we have to like transcend that to that ownership you're talking about to shower of ourselves of on this plane but also like on the astral planes and all the planes. and then it comes through us and that's yeah. what biogeometry is it's life force that comes through us that's what we own that's all that's what we own i think it was brilliant to share and it reminds me of like everything is re- relative like we are comparing it somehow oh. here and like uh it's it's hard for us to look from the absolute maybe perspective too there are everything about yes. some perspective there mm-hmm. and then this polarity comes again like uh you know everything sort of has to be good or bad for for us humans <laughs> and like can be something in the middle uh because of our perspective because we we like to put up like usually our ego perspective that this is good this is bad or something and we don't see it some from, from maybe higher perspective that it's good for something bigger also for us like looking at our life from above i was actually mentioning it today i think to my mom <laughs> and like you know now when i look from above about my whole life path i appreciate a lot all all the things that were happening even they were bad at that moment so it's all good now it's all good yeah it was like different perspective and uh uh and now i love to look at this uh whatever happens in this way also uh also in terms of ownership i think it's also temporary um yes. for a moment like like you know when we were kids we used to own a lot of toys you know we were so like this is like my property you know too much into it and where is that ownership now like what we were owning 10 years back where is that ownership now what so it could be a game now? it could be Sorry. a game to share just like that when you were a kid it was like this is my guitar you can't play with it it's mine you know and we got to have that experience with each other through the okay you can play with it have fun with it and i got to see you be happy maybe that's what ownership is it's a game yeah like the whole web 3 it started with this thing of ownership like like right now few companies are owning your data your identity your everything you know you are you're on their mercy like it happened to many people it happened with my friends also like their accounts on instagram they were influencers or they were having ngos having thousands of followers something something minute mistake they did and the account got suspended and now the person is ground zero because there was no ownership the whole concept of web3 came with a sense of ownership and then this ownership came in everybody like every one of us like like who, who felt as a as a you know like a puppet of these this big companies felt out like okay this is something we should go this is something because everybody is having their own power to own something up and build something up so now it is on us from where to take it where to take it and ma- make it so discreet that everybody should have a you know sense of space where one, one another can contribute thank you it reminded me about all the communities in fact because that's something that really bothers me when people say that i have a community of <laughs> it's like do you really own these people how yeah. 
that like it, it's really like I, I was thinking about writing some post about it because it, it bothers me a lot how can you think that you <sighs> own these people there true and well what you use it for so even if the focus is on people in the space which i love then through all this kind of little programming they still look at these people as how to monetize it too <laughs> it's like i own it and like i have this community and what will bring to me yes. yeah like a lot of mixed feelings here guys i don't know what to think yeah, you know, that, that what i okay gary please please it technically cannot own like a community you <laughs> can only be like part of a community or participate in the community it's like look uh but do you feel like, that way in, in many ways like uh, when when people are showing like this is my community do you feel like they're really like part of it or they they kind of make themselves above that community. Yes. You're right. When right they try to like say get the whole community to do something and kind of like starts coming across as like being a dictator, right? It's like even like when I'm like working on the project like on the fake news or like the Twitter stuff. Yeah, like I can like say, okay, I like learned this like new insights. I kind of like share it like in the community. Whether like the members want to engage or not, it's their own free will, right? If they're curious, okay, let's do it. Like uh, if they're not, it's okay. It's just an additional piece of data point. Just help yourself. <laughs> That's like generally my attitude towards things. No? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know, now understand probably why I was like, it's not my community here. Um, even when you were saying like, oh, I built some community set. I don't feel like I own here anyone and like this is my community. I'm gathering here with my friends and we are equally, you know, contributing to the space, etc. That's true. And I also feel that from you. It's a uh, but I'm I see also some patterns in this uh, LinkedIn space or like web yeah. in general that um, people are like kind of like putting themselves above and it's like it's my like community the... below. <laughs> Yes, yeah, same, like, same what you like what you said. Like I have experienced the same thing. I felt the same thing. When when you talk to a person as a VC or some somebody who's a, at a very good post, the way they are boasting about their communities, it totally sounds like that. You know, I, I thought I was the only one who could figure out, but like hearing you the, the you're saying the same thing. Yeah. It's like uh, you know, it's like when like someone say this is my community and starts putting himself above the rest in the community. Yeah. That's almost like the start of a fascist like trend. True, true. Well, going <laughs> again with some great definition there. Well, I want to own a lot. Back, you you remind me of that video. <laughs> I want to own a lot. I was, like, I was reading through so like the whole thing away. and I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Now I kind of like understand his perspective. See, I was like, why would he use that term? And then I was like reading through like uh, the bu a bunch of books. I was like, oh, okay, wow, okay, I see. Like the whole metaverse thingy. I was like, ah, I see. So ah, uh, that's like I kind of like start seeing and understanding why he started using that term, right? Because like when you kind of like dive in like the whole like fascist ideal, uh, ideal is like it's more like okay, the belief of a superior man that should come and like kind of give command and direction for that everyone else and like when you see someone says i own this community who knows better <laughs> sure. it goes along with that who, somebody has to know better to be yeah, i know better than the community yeah that's old... but when you think about fascism then you probably immediately think about hitler and like going too much into extreme <laughs> You know what's interesting is we don't even know what that was. I, I I think what we learned in history about Hitler may not be. I think we just have a lot of realities out there. I I know that I uh, I'm just referring like to the programming general like people mm -hmm. how would respond to to the name fascism, and it I would see. not be like positive, um and that's why maybe for many things I believe we need to like totally have different names because educating mm -hmm. into definitions it's too hard it's too stuck in our brains all right let's like use a different term then let's use the term uh the forming of like a superior man like uh, a group like that with like a superior man at the top <laughs> yeah the patriarch the old patriarch yeah the old patriarch system the old right? masculine 
is what it is. And there's the yeah. old feminine too, and both of them. Yeah, we're like transcending. Some, at the top. <laughs> some female are repeating the same patterns, guys. I, I yeah. am are. totally aware of it because that's what we so were we also need... taught to to find ourselves in in here. So, so there's a new definition of the masculine and feminine occurring now. And what does that look like? That's what we get to do here. Is we get to be what that newness is and then like a mushroom spore mm. it will grow i i don't want to bring that uh gender uh, aspect really to divide okay. us any anyhow because i believe it really depends on on people i'm actually uh yeah there have been too many uh now narratives about gender Gender about the women of blockchain, you know, races, or colors, of... uh, na uh, nationalities, etc. Yeah. And I was like, I don't feel it. I don't see it. Okay. It's not in my perception. Then I realized what we are doing here. Did anyone bring that, you know, we do it equally. We do something like there are people from different countries, etc. No, we are just being here <laughs> and we are enjoying it. And we don't need to mention <laughs> that we are doing it for equality or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe it comes later. <laughs> because the more probably it's it like in that media narrative, oh, I love it. the Skip more we actually think about separating. And, yeah, I 100% agree. Or making one part guilty of something. Oh, shame. I had a really beautiful conversation with uh, Francis, uh, Francis. Yeah about it too like men feel ashamed of what happened so far etc we know how like low emotion it is shame guilt it's also not good i don't want this i want just to enjoy time with you guys <laughs> no matter what, what how they want to divide us yeah magda is on so what i'm hearing you say aga is the labels aren't really helpful creates no. more separateness than unity exactly can we see ourselves Ex as humans simply so here's like what i observed that's interesting after like listening to uh the inputs so far well it's like when you kind of come into a new space that's like generally unstructured there's a tendency for you to kind of like uh, project the labels that you already have in mind into that new space to kind of create some form of structure so they can better like understand and operate in it. And 100%. That itself yeah. is like the cause of the problem. <laughs> it's like the monkey mind is not able to kind of like sit in that unstructured space and just be in that space. The monkey mind just like starts like jumping around and like starts like throwing like all these labels that's already in there into the space. It's like, oh, okay, this is like what I'm like familiar with. <laughs> and that has different meanings for everybody because yes. of their lens that they use. And then all of a sudden you've got a space that's got chaos, which I love. Chaos is great, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but maybe not as productive in the long run. Well, that's why I think like uh, metaverse will be in fact something positive too. <laughs> if you are hidden through some, behind some avatars, you don't see you don't you that, that person you don't maybe make many assumptions about the person that we we are programming right um right now around you don't know who it is anonymity would be also i think good you don't know if this person has uh has for example uh, 10000 followers or or just 10 and that could be interesting. I think that's that's maybe the lesson to learn from from metaverse, from my perspective. Because mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of, of jumping there and then like sitting for hours uh, when the, like the world is so beautiful and we can enjoy so many different ways. Uh, but I see it as a process for humanity, maybe in these terms. What do you think? Of? So here is like how i'm seeing the metaverse when i look at it from like the full technology stack right yes at the uh experiential layer maybe we could actually introduce like anonymity like what like aga has like proposed 
However, when you like look further down the stack, like the right now, like technology wise, like every single metaverse environment outside can only like support probably around like 150 uh, concurrent like users maximum. And the servers to actually run this metaverse environment is like very, very expensive. And then you look at the R&D that's going in, right? It's going to be very costly. The folks that's like saying they're creating metaverse, like technically just like using one of, one of those like few like platforms that's out there. So the way I'm like seeing the trend that's going to pan out is like eventually there's probably going to be like two to three like platforms, like really large platforms that host all those metaverse like environments that like all the consumers are kind of like there like uh, interacting with. So let's take a step back. How is it like very different from like what we have right now? We have like a few major platforms where everyone is on. <laughs> Yeah, this one I don't believe it will be like totally decentralized. And on top of it, we have five G. Like, the more things change, the more they say the same. Yeah, it's like the same, you know. It's just it's different the cover. It's an it's illusion. The same since Egypt. It goes all the way back to Egypt. It's been the same. Yeah, it's like a slave was... population. I mean, they are making different covers, so we are happy and we think that something changed for better. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. under it. Are the need Dead it's slaves. the same? So yeah, I'm I'm also curious like how many of us will wake up with in this turn. And apparently this is a breakthrough, like us. great awakening for, for people. So uh of us, I mean humanity like um in general. Uh because I think this is this is going to, to change. <laughs> I think, we'll wake uh... up more. One thing that came to mind after like listening uh from like the previous inputs is that uh, maybe like the change is to just totally disengage you know? it's like uh, there were remember like I uh, there was yeah, like, what this, I'm saying this regime that was uh, occupy a dictator a regime that was occupying either Cambodia or Vietnam or Laos and like uh, the regime was like really oppressive and then at some point the local population couldn't handle it anymore there was like protests and the protest was very like counterintuitive right Here's what happened. A few folks that's been practicing like mindfulness, one of them was a monk, came into the middle of the square one day, and there was that protest. One of them, the old guy, like sat and did his meditation, and the rest of them like started pouring gasoline over him and then like lit the gasoline on fire. And then he literally burned to death in front of everybody. And that's just like uh you no, know, this is like a gesture, right? I'm actually like deciding to disengage from this like uh, dictatorship, whatever it is, and this is how I disengage. It's a very strong <laughs> state. <laughs> About going to extremes. <laughs> Boy, hit, Thank you, hit Gary. The I thought I knew the extreme, button. but no. <laughs> that was the real extreme. And now I Hope opened my mind even more. And then That's like... Uh, some reporter took a photo of that. Like, look at this. This guy, in a very peaceful manner, like, he actually did not struggle at all. He died very peacefully, even though he burned to death. <laughs> That's as strong as a statement that you can make, right? And then suddenly, like, international media, like, uh, notice this. is like, okay, this regime has to change. And then, like, uh, the UN came in, like, started applying a lot of pressure. And then, like, that regime collapsed. I believe that was also something that Marina was mentioning in one of her channelings that people at some point will just stop uh, reacting to whatever is happening. They will yeah. actually disattach from it uh, mm -hmm. and just do. let's do our stuff. We don't care what you are doing, guys, there. And we are just starting a new side and we are not giving our attention energy there. Consciously yeah. or unconsciously, like uh, about energies and, and spirituality, let's say. Uh, it's just like enough, it's enough. We don't want to be part of it. We it's don't not that you don't care. It's just that you want to focus a new reality in a being. Yeah. We all care. Eight, we, we all care a lot. I don't care about them. That mean what I mean. Like what happens there with that. them. Mm hmm I, I leave them to the universe to take care of whatever has to be there, you know? Because I'm yeah, also not going focus. to fight and, and I don't know, uh, put anyone maybe in prison myself or, or, or oh. kill, let the universe take care of it. You want to focus in a new frequency. I am in a new frequency, my dear. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, I you got you. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's not that you don't care because you do care a lot. It's just that you care more about focusing a new frequency for everybody than you want to focus on the old because whatever we focus on, we create more of. Yeah, I just like to, uh, you know, say in here, like the person who have a definitely a spiritual mindset or who are definitely spiritual from within, who wants to evolve and you want to do better to the society, definitely when they see anything bad happening around in the universe, they have that sense of empathy and that is quite natural for them to think that way. But then definitely that's the way what Aga said. We have to focus towards creating the positive because that's natural. Our mind will definitely go towards them. But then definitely we have to cut that cord because then our energy is just wasted on the drama that they are doing and they just want us to stick into that. They just want us to be thinking about it rather than creating something new. So definitely we have to cut the cord from there and shift our perspective to what better we can do to ourselves and the society. Well said. Cut the cord. I do care about humanity, about people. I don't care about that guy. That yeah. The narrative that, that, there. I know yes. that my truth and and i just followed this part so yeah that is that and they is are the you way. too sorry sorry they are you too all of them are you yes but i leave them to the universe i'm just it's a distinction between caring or not caring you care a lot it's just a word i suppose again and definition how we understand it like i will not give my attention that anymore and yeah. just focus on the positive there's, and building positive there's like um in transcending there's a part where you have to love the part that you, before you didn't love and when you can do that you, you the the dark you shine the light where the dark was but when you say you don't care there's resistance in that but when you say i love them i forgive them bless them and then you release it now you let a bunch of light in so that you can elevate by by reality. saying I don't care, I actually say that I released it and it's aside. I accept that this is part of the world, but I it's a part of the world I don't want to participate in, and I'm building a new one. So I'm actually like in the last part apparently what you said. That's what I mean yeah. by I don't care. Yeah, because like we definitely are having a limited Beautiful. set of energy, you know focus like where we can put in and wherever we put our energy and focus in, that thing will grow right yeah so so with that knowledge what's the next step like what we put our energy and focus in that thing will grow so you there's have? what what is, what does that look like in the small decisions in our lives that we can actually control individually like you know it you do it every day yeah you around know it every day. you like with your like, family, right, friends, neighbors, and us to here together, you know the answer. Right, but we're here. We're here to expand, right? So, like, how can we? How can mm -hmm. we do that? Even you are part of expand. everything. So, by expanding yeah. yourself, the yeah, positive me, vibes, yeah. you are influencing everything. Yeah, like you're doing it right now. You are focused on here in this in this group. You could have been anywhere on the internet right now. You can be looking onto anything. You could be surfing, surfing anything. But you are here. Right. So what's which the reminds me of the scale. Yeah. That scale is also pers like some sort of perspective that it has to be like by millions mm. of people, you know? Maybe it's, there is a different perspective on scale. Because if you yeah. improve yourself well, <laughs> it will 100%. also scale to the whole world. Butterfly. A hundred percent. So that's exactly. why I said the small exactly. things that we can do in our lives. What's the next logical step? I think that's what we're here for, right? Like we're, we're doing the work inside, whether it's through mindfulness or some other technique that we have walking the dog or, you know, we're doing the work here. Our hearts are holding more of a, a heart frequency than ever before. We have more sort of compassion for others. And now it's coming through our actions. And we're here talking about ownership. You know, so like what is the next logical step that we can take that brings in this frequency even more? Just be, relax. Just be. We don't focus on what we have to do now. Relax about okay. it. Let it flow. Let it come as we were talking. Uh, the right inspiration will come. And we will know then. But we should relax about it. And don't force All right. it.
uh, and I think then will be clear. And everybody here, or like with our group, uh, if you are mentioning like what we should do as as this group, uh, I think just practice ourselves all this stuff and, and trying to to turn more and more into positive and really feel it, because if someone doesn't feel it really, uh, it can also disturb here the the energy around us. So trying to do our best within. I so do say. nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. As Gary was saying, let's just, you know, the do nothing society. Be kind of do nothing. <laughs> yeah. For me, always that was the source of the best inspirations and ideas. <laughs> when doing nothing and like relaxing. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. What's up? I, I haven't met you before, but we're doing nothing here, just so you know. You just logged into <laughs> four, three, yeah, five the best doing part nothing. where we decided we not to doing do nothing. It. You joined the do, the do Nothing Society. <laughs> <laughs> and Magda is, no, yeah, we're actually laughing. And uh, yeah, my daughter is, is very happy about it. Yeah, I understand that, guy. What's up? Glad you could join us, Garis. Yeah, yeah. Can't see you, yeah. Where's your, my, where's your... uh, network is poor, so I disabled my uh, video. I only like enabled my voice. Oh, I see. That's, he hasn't had right. a shower in two weeks, Gareth. You don't want to see him right now. <laughs> he but you're not going to smell weeks. him. <laughs> I we can might. Smell by, by seeing him, I might start to smell him. I'll be tuning <laughs> to that reality. Okay. Actually, I Next had level. a shower yesterday, you know. I, like, jump into ice cold water in the river and just, like, bathe myself. What Man. a gift. Oh, my. That's a great one. What a gift. One thing I learned is that if you go in head first, like uh, as soon as your head like gets drenched in like ice cold water, the adrenaline system kick starts, and then as soon as that starts, you stop feeling cold all again. Yeah, and and it's better to ease yourself into it, right? Like you've you've done that before. Actually, no, it's better to just <laughs> <fight with. laughs> I heard it's very healthy, but kind of not, doesn't encourage me yet to try. <laughs> I'm Polish, but I don't like uh, cold. <laughs> oh, it's Just like, to be clear. Uh, I'm not used to cold. I don't like cold. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's either that or like deal with like itchy scalp because of like not washing the hair for like two, three days. It like, gets like really itchy after a while, especially when you have like the beanie on. So like uh, I figure I'll just like, ah, go just jump into the river and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, on these lines, I'm Indian and I very much like cold. So I'll turn on my AC to 16 to feel that cold <laughs> because that's mm -hmm. not the right thing. <sighs> because that because outside it's too heat, too hot in here. Yes. Hmm. Okay, guys. So what do you say about some conclusion about this ownership uh, and sort of manifestation, how it should look like? Hmm. So actually, I would think in terms of like ownership, maybe we like switch over and since like uh, Neil kind of prompted into the action side, the kind of like projects you want to support, right? Because, like, if we can, like, start, like, supporting projects and, like, the projects have some ownership structure that we do not agree with, maybe we don't want to support those projects. <laughs> 100%. If they, if they reward the, 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 the first token holders, which is 90% of them, mm -hmm. right? Like, the first Bitcoiners are rewarded the most. The first Ethereum people are rewarded the most. The first DAO members are rewarded the most. Like, if it's along that line, it doesn't match what we <clears> talked about. Yeah. So, like, even, like, with TrueSide DAO, right, when you, like, look at the total tokens, like, in, like, the that's actually, like, minted out there, 99.95% are still held in the reserves. <laughs> and, like, uh, getting the tokens issued out is a very, very slow process because it's, like, all based on, like, contribution, right? <laughs> So I like uh, if I kind of like want to like support a project, I would like expect like the project to kind of like more have like this kind of like incentive structure than saying, all right, you're like the first like a uh, set of like uh, people that came into the project, therefore you own like seventy percent of the token distribution. That to me is kind of like already against my DNA, right? And like I probably wouldn't even want to contribute to this kind of project. 
or like a, a project that comes in and say, I'm like a VC funded project. And from my perspective, it's just perpetuating like the whole hierarchy bullshit and nonsense. So I probably wouldn't want to like contribute to like such kind of projects. You see where I'm getting at? Like I had like a talk with Alexa, she, like uh, she's kind of like setting up a DAO, like a service DAO. And from my perspective, it's like, it's like structured in such a way that feels natural. At least like from my perspective to support, it's like saying, okay, I'll support you. So I'll give you some of like our tokens, like swap for your tokens. And then like, we can like exchange, right? Collaborate. So it's like really flat. And like, it feels like uh, something that feels very organic that would actually like fit well in the, like a mycelium network structure. That is like something I would like be two thumbs up to like supporting. You know? <clears throat> We might need a way to define the mycel the mycelium network structure. Mm -hmm. Like I know we have like a conceptual view, and that's great for a step. But we might need a little more. And and Sarah, who was here, that's like her <coughs> jam. But because if we're gonna compare projects to what we like, or you know what our DNA is aligned to, mm -hmm. then we need we need like um a way to do that. Yeah, so maybe that will be like something is like uh, the next actionable steps, right? Because they're kind of like slowly evolving to like uh, projects that has like social impact. I was like, okay, then. Like, guys, that's, guys, that's I don't want to take it on this record uh, okay. with this ownership um, event, okay. let's say. All right. And let's move it for another time and, and talk about it. As I told you, like, let's digest everything. Let's go with the research in this area and and then we come back to it okay yeah sure. Let's i wanted to conclude with this ownership topic actually <laughs> and, and uh, you know then then we can talk about other things so how do you guys feel about um future of ownership like right the now the, with the invent of web3 the ownership is definitely at a very nascent stage, it's like like where you're the beginning, but definitely Web three is providing an opportunity, a space for everybody to you know have something, something of its own in in the web space. So that's the opportunity here. Like definitely, you're not relying on all the big companies, all the big giants. Definitely, you can own a space over here. And how are we gonna take it? Yes, that's that's like we have to see. I think you got to give ownership back to the people. I think the people that have the inspiration, the impulse to create something, um, I, you know, I don't like to say people need to do anything, but I think if it's going to align with our new DNA, there needs to be a mechanism that gives it back to the people. The way I would see it is like the expansion of the scope of property of the commons, right? Because currently what's happening right now is like a lot of the, what is like really belongs to the property of the commons has been like slowly privatized. For example, like all the data we contributed to like training all those like huge AI machines that's like really generating tons of cash. Those like, uh, those data really belongs to the property of the commons. Facebook is a property of the commons too, right? Uh, the data, tr uh, the the whole data source, like, is the property of the commons. Like, why is like just restricted to one company for access? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. We got to give it back to the people. Even like the whole like uh, you know web scraping thing, like website. Like nowadays, like I would say Google has like monopoly over like web scraping, right? With like their whole recapture system. It's like if you kind of like a third party, like a person that's trying to extract some data from some website for some research purposes. If the website has installed like Google Capture, you have no access to it. But like, uh, well, when Google's crawler goes and like access the website, of course, like the capture will let the website through. Garris, brother, we got to hear from you. What do you think about ownership? Okay, I. There's nothing wrong with talking about um, the fundamental revolution, which is Web3 and everything from Web3, as we understand, is about, um, you know, individual creating the footprint in digital world we are living in. This is about the intellectual or privacy protections about individual 
probably you know copyrights or assets or whatsoever you say um it's like this thing is 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 going on and how are we going to piggyback this revolution that is coming in as a frontier wave now as this is going to be whether if you're riding the wave alongside or you're not doing anything i mean there are people doing things alongside new new changes in this world now currently about web3 so i'm not going to hear i'm not going to sit here and and trying to talk about the uh the thing is currently ongoing i, I just want to hear out and discuss or maybe contribute like how any ideas that anyone know how to piggyback on this current wave there's no point talking about the fundamental because it's the fundamental is it's not it's not for us to change because you know the tidal wave of web3 is coming in now so what are we going to do with coming up with ideas to um capitalize on this new ideas so i currently still thinking that's why i'm here to hear out if there's anyone who have any ideas so this is my output now so back to you neil that was an output that said that said i don't want to i don't i don't want to i want new ideas to do come on man Ownership, so the question like, the, the course question is do you, do you have idea you would if you don't have an idea i don't have ideas no point well no point. first we, of all really i like what you said Let's i like start. what you said about the new frontier the new frontier yeah. and there's a wave yeah. coming and it's bigger than all of us i like what you said there right and so i think what we've agreed like when you got here was that is to ride the wave is to the action of non-doing right gary the dow they change yeah. uh -huh. the, the, the non-doing and and um it's not really about activating around new ideas right now it's about being still to receive the waves that are coming actually it is a little bit because everything okay. starts in our heads we're thinking or talking and that's why i prefer to start from okay what kind of world we want to see in the future the perfect world can be utopian as you would say or whatever and then how we can get there uh then it starts but we have to have this vision like in a business we need to have vision of the business and we know with which and values so we are getting there and step by step you know uh it will form or it will connect us with the right people who are doing some part of it <clears throat> because this is a huge concept of course the world is is complex it's not just on one side on ownership or there, there's so many aspects i, I, I fully understand it I, I, Ega, I fully understand where you're coming from this is like reversing the pyramid now it's like um it's good to, you chat out you have a yardstick or benchmark you have a vision you have a goal and you you, from there, is, you, you can probably decipher scaling down what should we do to reach that goal. But issues like this is just a pointing of a direction. Man, in manifestation, is fine. You know, it's, it's, it's very positive. But issue is like concretely, now we talk about this Web3. So, so the mechanism is blockchain, leveraging on the peer-to-peer -peer computer, whatever it is to to have a decentralized um, um, a decentralized method to leveraging on the blockchain to have the uh, full protections on the individual contribution to the digital world, you know? So whatever output, which is called the footprint that you created in the digital world, you own the intellectual um, property that, from your output. So issues like, direction is where you're coming from ega you know this is the, the, the hierarchy's way of chatting out the goal and the visions this is perfectly fine but this is still the you're pointing out the frame framework but concretely we underlying we need to have ideas and then starting out from the ideas we probably would need someone to build that idea to reach out and pee back on the way because whatever products or services you created using uh, using the blockchain technology, you, you have to serve as a purpose, as in a value in exchange 
to get the agreement of the mass public um, adoptions, you know, into finding this is something very useful in their daily life. There's nothing, it's no point painting a good picture and then you say that this is this serve a purpose. No, it doesn't work that way. This is what I'm, I'm perceiving to share my um, my thought about it. Yeah. Well, that's why I think like many, many projects may fail because they don't see that bigger vision there behind. And it's like experimenting on some stuff right now or solving problems that are really superficial and they're not really to the core of the problem. And that's why seeing something like, like this complex, you know, organism that we are in because we are in, in the, it's something way bigger. It's very useful. So I know that many want to take an action, but I am a fan of taking like really thoughtful action. And does it do you or do you do it? Do you do the action or does the action do you? I think I was saying like, we want the action to do us, like to come through us. Yeah, I mean, it comes from like first, like gaining more knowledge about different topics and how they interconnect, because I see also like we've built through the system many specialists in some areas. But because there are so many specialists in separate ideas, like the, 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 they don't see the other aspects which are interconnected. How we can build something really like long term helping humanity if, if everybody is looking from one perspective or on, I don't know, so many projects were, that are gathering very technical guys and then they figure it out they they propose some project and they don't care about other aspects and perspectives it has many layers it's not that simple there is not like for one problem can be many different reasons or some totally different reasons than everybody thinks because it was for example programmed by by media so i am a very thoughtful person yes i'm I'm analyzing a lot. Uh, it can take some more time. I'm actually not thinking about it like just uh, this this month. I, it's like a couple of years of, of different analysis. But um, it's. I think it's a, that is a great basis to move forward after with action, which is also needed. Like I love your power, guys. That yeah, let's do something and, and like this manifesting. But I guess. We need to find some balance between action, like let's do now because we, we think like we know and between really knowing and feeling like, yes, this is from many perspectives, the right thing to do. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> I would like to balance our energies um, because I suppose that that's, that's mine maybe like Sometimes I'm over analyzing. Yeah, I know. And I, I try to, to balance it too. Uh, but on the other side, I feel that there is more needed to, to check, to know yeah. really, and from different perspectives. Still, maybe some different people needed in this group with different perspectives and really engaging in it. It's fine. I mean, what, you're, what you're saying is totally, totally right. And the, I find it the same way. Like if you see organizations there, what is happening, few tech coders who definitely know the coding, who definitely know the tech, they want to build something and they won't have an idea about what marketing is and how it's going to behave in the market when it comes live. And because, and, and now the thing is, everybody's so stringent about what they believe you know it's gonna gonna happen and then the other on the other side we see this disparity like the marketing guys they will definitely figure out a product like that can do well and they want to you know make it everybody in the very first version like this and that and they won't care about the technology so when so now again in this group or when we have to do something we have to you know have that people from different perspective different areas having different uh, set of expertise where everybody can show light on different aspects, what we can't see ourselves. So that definitely will add a value. <laughs> and it's deeper than just, you know, specializations like we were taught in school. Actually, like we just, come on guys, we, we were talking about it on WhatsApp too, on Gary's group. Uh, like there is so much behind the scenes 
And you need to be that curious mind, open, really open mind to look deeper, deeper for, for different aspects and proofs of something. And it cannot be only what is programmed in media, yeah, what is in the mainstream. And this requires also some time to, you know, dig and then each person probably digging into different aspects. Let's connect it together. That's why this, this kind of group meetings are for so we can exchange these different perspectives of what we've learned so far. And I, I would say I'm humble. That's how you say it. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I know everything yet. I still feel there is something coming from outside that to, to find out, to figure out. And I think this curiosity is actually something that's gonna um, bring us farther also. I agree. I agree. I think, I think um, what I mean is there's something out here that wants to come through us. And so we have to be still to allow it through us. Yeah, also. Yeah, it's just let it flow as, as we are doing still. Um, thinking about it, talking about it, like with this intention that we want to help humanity, really. I think it's already doing a lot and turning our vibes positive, you know, like we are doing here too. Have some fun and, and give, give some hope to all of us. We know it's going to be good no matter what we are doing or not doing. Um, and the inspiration will come. Oh, I can't and they're wait. right answers. We don't know where even, like for, with this mushroom stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the inspirations from there. Like I, I believe in nature, like going to nature. Maybe we take like one month off, guys, vacation, just enjoying ourselves in, <laughs> uh, in some nature and getting inspiration from there. Because that's how naturally things should go with us too. Yeah, actually, I want to add to what Aga, Tusha, and Neil said earlier about like the, this whole thing about some tech guys coming in and like kind of building stuff and like assuming uh, like they know everything. Like past like two months, I've literally wrote zero lines of code. <laughs> Even though I'm like an engineer by training, right? It's like, it's really hard. You know? It's like, uh, you have this tendency and you kind of want to do this and you're like, no, hey, you are not in that stage of the process yet. So rather than like writing code, like spend all my time like getting to know like folks within like a community that I'm like kind of interested to serve. And then like, as I, as, uh, as like the conversations that like, continue, like what I like start to realize is like some of the initial assumptions about that space was off <laughs> and then he just keep on digging further and further and further and then like okay then the uh, different like uh profiles like start surfacing in terms of like the different kinds of profile and then you like spend time digging into like each individual profile you like start like after like uh spending time you like start realizing okay each specific profile have their own sets of motivations right and then after you like spend time like digging more, you're like okay, like because of like their motivations, like what the uh, what are the mismatch between what is and like what could be, that like is like a very very long process. <laughs> and like two months in, I still have written zero lines of code. Now, if you think maybe if you consider like the two NFTs I minted or like OpenSea as code, yes, yes, I kind of like semi like created like a bunch of code on like blockchain like last week but that's about it <laughs> mm. and it's uh and it's like uh it's kind of like i'm in a sense like uh pulling a break on my own nature as far as i remember you have very analytical mind there too gary from your human design, I think we have the same uh, gate there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. Highway there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it takes a while. It does actually take a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the big things require time. It depends. We want to rush into something and do mm -hmm. it. Probably not correct. I mean, for some lesson, for sure. 
But I think we've been already through many lessons in our lives. So maybe let's gather the conclusions from them and, and like make things well, with, especially if it's about something bigger um, and truly like serving humanity more than just, you know, making another business and earn some millions, whatever. <laughs> or another approach would be this, right? It's like, you know, okay, this is all the information I've gathered so far. Maybe like more information will present itself later on. Not sure whether we get it or not. Let's like do something small in the in the uh, no interim and like just like you know maybe like that help us get more information more tech space. But mentally know that like whatever we've kind of come up with, it's just we, like the real, well, I'm probably gonna throw it away anyway. It's just like for we did that time. last week. We did that last week. We created something right in front of my eyes, and we threw it away already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we put it on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> Wait, and the conclusion is to... I'm good with that. I mean, I'm good with that. You know, I think there is an evolution here. And I think because we have so many different um, energies here, what I learned, what I learned in my business experience was I could create something and it would help a certain amount of people. But if we all create something together, it will help exponentially more people. So the more Garris comes, the more Gary comes, the more Tushar comes, the more all of us come, we are going to impact a much much more people go ahead Aga. what are you gonna say yeah i got I, this I idea that probably we need to clean some karmas there because if someone needs to go through some lesson <laughs> and we are going all with him <laughs> then for for this project's sake so we, we could we could you know clean some karmas there and like think more about what personal lessons we still have on there <laughs> Uh, to increase our chances for success for the humanity. This was hilarious, you know, karma. Thing. <laughs> Come on, I mean, that's true. If someone I mean, still needs like to butter. experience failure, and like, uh, I know some some people who have phoenix pattern there, and like, uh, th they need to really burn on something in order to grow afterwards. Like, <laughs> maybe let's not uh, let's clean it before. You know, yeah. it's what a coincidence you actually brought this up. No, earlier, like in the conversation, I was thinking to myself every new generation that gets born technically gets to relearn, has to relearn all the lessons and mistakes that the previous generation. Made. Yeah, that's a very huge, uh, you know, what's that's a very huge statement here. You stated, Gary, very, very big. It depends <laughs> on the soul. Yeah, the soul basically comes into this plane of existence for purification when you like look at it. Because if Otherwise, they didn't learn previously, so maybe in some past lives, they have to come yeah, back yeah. again and learn it again. So we are re repeating the same patterns. We are <laughs> repeating also, the same patterns. Also, like, to stay like, 200 years to ago, like 200 years ago, we, we, were, we were all still talking about how to do something better for humanity and still we are doing the same <laughs> <laughs> really, <man. laughs> few yeah, lives true. later <laughs> couple of lives later we meet later. again <laughs> yeah you know somebody up there watching for thousands us, of years was, guys Come, let's get it right this time there, look somebody up there watching us was like oh you know they, they were doing the same thing in that life now look at them <laughs> At that, Our time, higher selves at that time they were sitting on the tree and now they are using brave meetings <laughs> what we were doing back then <laughs> in some fire camp <laughs> yeah that's hilarious <laughs> like uh different tools but same set of activities huh <laughs> <laughs> we were well, some we all had to get here. there <laughs> well isn't it nice oh, that we're here now isn't it so nice that we're here now let's do something now and get out of the spiral <laughs> <laughs> Created, guys. Oh, I, created, felt, I felt that in my soul, too, Shy. I oh, felt that in my soul. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, that's the irony and the humor of the situation, right? Yeah, Did like, someone uh, put something in the air that we are sharing now? <laughs> laughing gas. Oh, maybe mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Laughing gas. Yeah. All right. Well, I learned a lot today. Yeah, um, I loved it. What, do we, guys, do we have you. like a final thing. I mean, did we reach anything on ownership? 
Mm, not that really. Be common I... and um, like sharing ownership. Property of the common. That, yeah, property of the common. Meanwhile, you have some things from your own energy, attention, time that you also share. Yeah. So there are different levels of ownership, I would say. Yes. The collective and, and individual. Different degrees. Different degrees and, of and ownership. Ownership, like ownership, begins, ownership begins with yourself. How much you own yourself. How much you own your thoughts, feelings, emotions. That, that's where yeah, to start. The planes of the ownership, like in planes in, to divine, etc. <laughs> yeah. From our individual to, to yeah. other levels. I look up. I look up. Okay, that's the end. My that's also have the... the yeah so we can laugh in the end and i, I stop recording <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah you should have stopped recording <laughs> yeah, because this is our tradition to laugh at the end